if you have no problem looking at something, staring at someone, not you know, you're not looking at them as a decent human being. You know, you're looking at them as an animal, as a piece of flesh. That's all you're looking at. Them. That means you have no respect for your own mother, your own sister, your own wife, your own daughter. They are also women. You wouldn't want somebody to stare at them. The one you're staring at is also somebody's daughter. It's also somebody's sister. It's also somebody's mother. Watch it. Even if they don't have respect for themselves, non-Muslim women sometimes they don't have respect for themselves, so they'll dress in inappropriate clothing. Even Muslims dress in inappropriate clothing, for that matter. But you have respect for yourself and the women of your family and, and, and lower your gaze. Do that. And it's really disgusting when the entire family sits together and they're watching movies and shamelessness comes on and they're all the mother and the daughter and the you know husband and the, the, the brother and everybody's sitting together watching. Oh, it was just one bad scene, it's okay. It's disgusting. That's not the behavior of a Muslim family. We should be disturbed by shamelessness. We should be, you know, we should stand against it. This is one of the great uh, troubles of this society. There are a lot of great things about our society. Lots of great things. But this is one of the things that's destroying our youth over exposure to shamelessness. Some girl just randomly messages you, I want to be your friend on Facebook. Well, I don't. No. Go find your, your brother to be friends with. Don't you have a father? He's not friendly to you? You need to find friends elsewhere? You know, these I, 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 guys, I'm telling you this very, very seriously. Very serious about this. These You think this is fun, and you know, oh yeah, she's, Pictures. It's your ticket to hellfire also. You're destroying your character. Would you want to marry a girl like that? That a hundred other boys have looked at and said, ah, oh, she's kind of cute, yeah. Oh, you married her? Oh, great. Where's your manhood? You know, the Muslim, they have a sense of haya, the women and the men. And our women, you know, you don't, you know, nobody's supposed to look at your wife except who? You. Nobody's supposed to enjoy her beauty except you. Right? You would be disturbed if somebody said, Oh, mashallah, you're a really beautiful wife. You'd be disturbed by that. Right? We're supposed to be as disturbed when we look at non muhalim We're supposed to have that sense of shame. I don't know where it's gone. It's on vacation nowadays. For a lot of Muslims, it's on vacation. Revive that sense of shame. This is very important. It will destroy your family life. You will not be able to have a healthy marriage. You will certainly not raise good children if you don't have a sense of shame. You have to have a sense of shame. The kind of filth that is on television, the kinds of things you're watching. You know, the Messenger warned us, alayhi salatu was salam. You know, Asiyat, Asiyat, uh, uh, they're wearing clothes, but they're not wearing clothes. He warned us of a time like that. And that's what, oh, it's just PG 13. It's okay, we can go. It's just PG 13. Oh, it's just one bad scene in there. Oh, it's not that bad. Right? What do you want us to do then? Because, you know, I can't even watch the movie. My parents don't let me do anything. My life is so sad because I didn't watch whatever. Right? Get over yourself and get over this obsession with entertaining yourself. You're, you're a free person. There is life other than television and other than movies and other than Hulu.com and other than, you know, whatever else. There's life outside of that too. There's still oxygen to breathe. You'll survive, trust me. You'll still be alive if you abandon those things. Actually, you'll be much happier too. Don't, if you know, the thing is, I can tell you what not to do, but finally I can tell you what to do, right? Because if you're not doing all of that, then what are you doing? Find time doing sports. Go out. <laughs> Start jogging or something. Find a healthy activity. I'm not saying necessarily find a religious activity. I don't expect that from you. But I do expect, find an activity that at least isn't making you a worse human being. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> at least do no harm. At least do no harm. And the elders here that are sitting, please, just a, a minute of your time. If our youth are coming together in the masjid, and they're not learning anything about Islam, they're just sitting here, eating pizza or whatever, and just talking about stuff. Some random video game. I am so happy that they're doing that. Because you know, if they weren't doing that here, they're probably doing something much worse at home. So don't say, hey, these children, hey, what are they doing? Uh, please don't do that. Let them be here. Because the alternatives are worse. At least they're doing no harm. At least they're better than what else is out there. You understand? You have to build these, you know, don't expect like the highest caliber of behavior from our youth. You didn't raise them that way, so how can you expect that from them? You put them in public school, they didn't apply themselves. 
you put them there, you expose them to shamelessness eight hours every day, and then when they don't act like, you know, the the you know, tabi'in, they're like, how can they behave like this in the masjid? What's the matter with you? Get real, it's accept reality, this is reality. So we know, I, I, I ask, sincerely ask the, the elders of our community to have more tolerance for youth in the masjid, to be more welcoming to them, to not push them away. And I sincerely ask you young, young guys, the last bit of advice is about shamelessness and I'm done until I promise this time, I'm done, done, I mean it. Find better company to hang out with. If your company is shameless, you will be shameless. If your company has shame and decency, you will develop shame and decency. If your company is messed up, they will drag you to hell with them. And you'll think that they're cool. But a day will come when they'll be really, really hot. Right? It's not going to be cool at all. So I, I pray you take some of this advice seriously, inshallah ta'ala. I didn't want to talk about too many things, but I ended up doing so anyway. I just feel like, you know, I don't get, I don't spend a lot of time, opportunity, talking to youth about just, just, uh, just uh, simple advice. Avoid shamelessness and try to fight the ego inside. Inshallah ta'ala, retain your humility. I sincerely pray that you are able to be leaders of this deen and able to carry its message and able to raise healthy, strong Muslim families, inshallah ta'ala, when the time comes. Because you are our leaders. You are, like it or not, you guys are the leaders of this community in the next, you know, decade. You are the, you, you are what this community is, inshallah. You are what Islam is. You have that responsibility. You, may, may Allah help you take that responsibility strongly, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah give your parents the ability to raise you right. May Allah help you find good company and help you avoid bad company. May Allah help you quit your bad habits, get you out of the cycle of being exposed to shamelessness, get you to learn to keep you to control your tongue against your parents and to, to stop wasting your time and to become regular in your salawat. If I said anything good or true, it's a gift from Allah Azza wa Jalla. If I made any mistakes, they're certainly my own. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik.